Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Khush amdi. Ji ayanu. Khuye morikh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Shaza Hashmi with World this morning. And unfortunately, Shazad is not joining us today. It's Monday. It's a beautiful, shiny, bright day outside. And the energies are great. The spirits are lifted in the studio because, ladies and gentlemen, let me inform you before we move on to what we're talking about. Today is the 12th of November. And all across the globe, we are observing World Pneumonia Day. So from 2009 onwards, officially this day was started being observed all across the globe. That was because this disease, pneumonia specifically, it is so common in every country, in every part of the society, especially, you know, the youngsters, the children are more prone to it. And this is not going away. I was just talking to a doctor sahab who's present in the studio over here, and we were discussing how smallpox and other diseases have sort of gone away with time. But can we expect that for pneumonia in the sooner or later future? And he said, no, pneumonia is going to stay with us. So ladies and gentlemen, this particular day we are observing to sort of aware everyone about the disease and also, um, you know, sort of create awareness about the cure and the treatments. Of course, you know, prevention is better than cure. Uh, we'll also talk about the prevention and um, in different parts of the world, especially in Pakistan as well, there are seminars which are being held to talk about pneumonia day. And uh, in Benazir Bhutto Hospital in Rawalpindi, Dr. Rai Asghar is, uh, has held a seminar and he's going to talk about pneumonia today over there. And everyone who wants to join him can especially go there in the morning because it's going to be a very informative session. So ladies and gentlemen, in line with that, World Pneumonia Day, before I dig into the history of it and all the you know, causes and symptoms, I actually want, to, uh, want my guest to tell us all of that. So without further ado, I need to tell you who the apt very apt guests are today in the studio. One of them happens to be a plastic surgeon who also, uh, you know, deals with burned victims. One of them happens to be a humanitarian, a philanthropist, and another happens to be a pulmonologist. What are these terms? We are definitely going to ask them. So on my right hand side, we have been joined by Dr. Sajjad Nasir, who happens to be a consultant pulmonologist at Maruf International Hospital. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? Wa alaikum salam, Shiza. Thank you very much. I'm fine. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Our pleasure, absolutely. And next to Dr. Uh, Sajjad, we have uh, with us a very sweet, a very gorgeous lady who is Ms. Hashmat Afandi. Assalamu alaikum, who happens to be a humanitarian and a philanthropist. How are you, ma'am? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well, and thanks a lot for inviting us. Absolutely, our pleasure. And last but not the least, we have with us the plastic surgeon that we were talking about, Dr. Asif Zubair Bhatti, who is a plastic surgeon, of course, and also deals with burn victims, especially he has joined us from Lahore. Thank you so much for being here, and he works at Shalimar Hospital. Thank How you. are you, sir? Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Looking forward to meeting you. Well, absolutely our pleasure to have all of you here. Thank you for joining us on this day. So before we start the conversation, Dr. Sajjad, the history or the importance of Pneumonia Day for everyone out there? Well, she's, I think, as you uh, briefly mentioned earlier on, that uh, back in 2009, mm -hmm. more than 100 different organizations which are associated with uh, children's welfare, mm -hmm. they gathered for a common cause and purpose of uh, preventing the death from pneumonia. Right. Um, as you might be aware that about uh, 155 million mm -hmm. kids under the age of five years, they get infected or get uh, diseased by pneumonia. Right. And out of those 155 million, mm -hmm. about uh, 1.6 million kids, unfortunately, they die every year. Every year. Every wow. year they die because of it. And it's and one of the. Huge it's a huge number. That, right? It's a huge number, and that's something you know due to a preventable condition, mm -hmm. and pneumonia, which can be prevented very easily. Right. So considering uh, you know that sort of a history, uh, the organisations they gathered to increase the awareness among the. Uh, public and among the uh, among the nations mm. to uh, increase the awareness and to make the remedies and measures to prevent the pneumonias in kids uh, because pneumonia under the age of five mm. is the biggest killer much more than combined HIV uh, malaria and measles together oh god wow that astonishing figures right I mean uh, so millions of children under the age of five die of pneumonia more than the die of you know malaria or HIV or any other disease combined Dr. Sab just told us but uh, before you know further discussion of uh, pneumonia Ms. Hashmat you used to live in uh, US for a very long time and then you decided to come to Pakistan and be a philanthropist here what drove you actually I still live there okay and for last uh, over 25 years yeah. I come uh, three to five times okay. a year yeah. uh, to Pakistan and work because I owe to my home country. This country has given me a lot, especially I work with the grassroots. Yeah. So I have seen the love and affection yeah. and how faithful they are. And on top of it, I see how they struggle. Yeah. 
right. and and things that are uh, available, hmm. but it's beyond their reach. reach so, so that drives me. That's my driving force. So you're sort of working for the people who deserve a lot of things, but don't have the my, access to them. My mission is burn victims. Burn I victims, work okay. with burn victims, and I have been working for that for last 25 years hmm. in Pakistan through Shalamar Hospital, which is in Lahore. Okay, okay, brilliant. Now, Dr. Asif, you also want, uh, work with burn victims, of course. So um, I think we've talked about this, but for the viewers over there, I need to ask you um, in detail, please. So definitely when any body part of you is burnt, the skin is gone, you're more exposed to different bacteria, viruses, and any sort of diseases, right? So uh, naturally, in terms of pneumonia as well, you're more exposed to it. So what are the chances of burned victims, you know, developing pneumonia more than normal people? No, actually, you know, burn victims, uh, there are different sort of burns a patient uh, right. person can get, now, especially when it is a smoke inhalation, where mm. there is a burn inside a closed uh, room, mm. then there is a lot of in smoke inhalation. That actually is the worst part of the burn, okay. which uh, involves the lungs. Okay. Now, a lot of the mortalities which happen in the burn cases, yeah. uh, depend upon the how much area is involved, also involve if their lungs are involved or not. Right, right. And a uh, lot of mortality, actually most of the mortality which happens in burns mm. are due to uh, pneumonia which have happened because of burn involving the lungs. Oh, so that is one of the, uh, you can see the correlation between the burns and pneumonia mm. is that uh, normally the uh, inhalation burns or one which is the person inhales smoke right. causes burn, it can lead to death because of very severe pneumonia or uh, lung failure mm. because of the uh, uh, the burn. Uh, also added with that is, as you mentioned already, exposure of the body part mm -hmm. to a lot right. of uh, uh, germs because there is no skin coverage there, there is no right. open uh, room for the germs to grow in. Yeah. So even if they say they save from any uh, lung involvement, but secondarily they can get infected because of the burns, uh, germs getting into through the, uh, the burnt skin. And right, then they can so get secondary pneumonia as well. So uh, that is very cause effect relationship with that. So it needs to prevent early mm. on. Sometimes we cannot prevent it, even if it's so much uh, aggressive. Mm. But it can be timely checked, can easily be, uh, it can be managed if a uh, patient is in the right place and right, right time and treated properly. Well, thank you. That's what I was going to ask. So how long do we find, I mean, it's pneumonia, especially in terms of burn, uh, burn patient. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So um, is it like very late when they develop pneumonia and then doctors find out and it's very fatal then? No, normally it's actually it's a big uh, for a major burn victim. Normally they have respiratory problems straight away. Right, so most right. of them have inhalation problems so they expect straight away. They expect to have, okay. and then we, uh, if they are in a proper burn unit, hmm. burn uh, facility or burn ICU, yeah. where they need a uh, facility of an ICU there to care that. So actually, we in Shalamar we have that uh, okay. special ICU for pediatric burn victims, especially right. if they are more susceptible because obviously children are have uh, uh, more susceptible all those infections mm. and uh, problems which can happen with skin and then they need a, a very good intensive care and high dependency care straight away mm. to prevent it happening mm. or right. if it has happened to control it as well. Okay. So that's need that, that you expect it to develop straight away mm. uh, most of the time but can be prevented as well if they are in proper, uh, a pro proper facility which right, have right. all the uh, necessary uh, equipment like ventilation, right. uh, respirator, or uh, the isolation to prevent mm. infection to happen. Well, I so know this is uh, getting a little off track, but all the facilities mm. that you just mentioned, and you said if, if mm -hmm. they will survive or they will make through it if they have these facilities. Yes. Aren't these basic and shouldn't everyone have the access to these facilities? Yes. I mean, it, why should this be a privilege? Because everyone is susceptible to pneumonia as much sure. as, you know, poor or the rich people. Mm -hmm. But we'll come to that later. Dr. Mm -hmm. Sajad, I want you to tell me the bacteria that actually develops pneumonia. Is it seasonal? Is it related to what, let's say, contaminated places or what not? Everything about it, please. Um, she said it's, it's, it's a very good question and a difficult question to yeah. answer as well. Okay. Uh, but, you know, pneumonias, uh, they are basically caused by different organisms. Right. And um, the, we sort of we divide them into viruses, which are more common mm. than bacteria, which are more common than an organism known as fungi. Okay, okay. The viruses, uh, as you know, mm. most of us, we get common cold, right. flu, and that is sort of more seasonal thing which happens <coughs> in autumn and winter. Right. The bacterial infections, they tend to happen in people who are at the extreme of ages. Okay. So age, say, more than 65 and age less than five years. And if they have any other predisposing conditions which make them immune compromised or make their defense system weaker, mm. and that include having uh, pre-chest uh, conditions like asthma, COPD, 
um, uh, viral infections and burn patients, as you mentioned, because by, with, the, with the burns you get the smoke inhalation right, right. and your defense system gets compromised. Mm. So bacteria that take an opportunity for mm. any breach in the uh, barrier or defense of your system to get into the lungs and cause inflammation and damage to the lungs causing pneumonias. Mm -hmm. And the fungi are the rare breed uh, which cause infection only in severely immune compromised patients. Okay. Uh, by that I mean patients who are say getting chemotherapy mm. or having any other immune deficiency viruses which can right. prone them to the fungi infections. So to summarize, I think coming to your question, uh, they can be seasonal okay. uh, depending on the type of the season we are going through, but mm. mainly autumn and winter. And viruses are more common during the seasons, but they can predispose you to the bacterial infections mm. and then the fungal infections. Okay. And uh, I think to, to your other point about the food and uh, the, the general lifestyle, I think it's very important because if that you are, matters as well. That, that matters because okay. if you're not having a healthy food and a regular exercise, mm. that can compromise our immune system and right, can prone right. us to infections, to any type of infections. Okay. I think the most important message which I would like to give to the audience is the vaccination mm. of the kids under the age of five years, uh, not only the general vaccinations, but the vaccination in particular for the common bacteria, mm. which one of them is a streptococcus pneumoniae okay. and haemophilus influenzae. Okay. Both of them have got vaccinations available which can be given to the kids to prevent any pneumonias. Well, thank you for saying the doctor, sir, because when we talk about, you know, influenza or pneumonia, they, they are very common, but then again, they're so uh, generally, you know, not a lot of people know there are vaccines available for them. Even for, you know, a few days back, I didn't even know, someone told me that there's a vaccine for influenza as well. So how do we make everyone aware of these? I mean, let's not talk about the people. This question is actually for all of you. Let's not talk about the people, you know, living in the urban areas. Let's talk about the downtrodden segments of the society who probably don't even have access to the medical units or don't have access to doctors to go to who can probably inform them what's going on. So first of all, how do we inform them about the vaccines that are available? And do you think it is the role of the social workers, all the health workers over there to actually tell them that you have the right to this? Starting with you. Uh, I think it's the responsibility of each and every individual of the society to take this message to, to, the, to the part of the society which don't have uh, exposure to all these facilities. Hmm. Uh, and I think the biggest role being played is by the general practitioners uh, which are working in the uh, public, in the community, in the outreach of the uh, areas. Right. And it's the responsibility of the lady health visitors, uh, the community workers, hmm. the social workers. And I think the biggest part which I would think is the schools hmm. because that is the nursery for all the kids and the generations which are coming over the next you know, few decades. Right. So we have to start educating them from the grassroots levels, whether that's the government or public school or a private school, mm. telling them about the, the healthy lifestyle, about the food, about the exercise, about the nutrition, about the vaccination. Mm. And I think that part of the community, which is sitting on the grassroots, can take the message to the, the, the bigger part of the society. Mm. And I think nowadays, when we are talking about the social media, which is a, a much, much bigger, bigger venture, tool, yes, much absolutely. bigger venture, than the, the media like you know, television, yeah, which yeah. is probably not accessible to each and every one of us. Right. So you know, by putting a very simple message on a Facebook or a WhatsApp can uh, address a bigger part of the society now. Hmm. Okay, thank you for saying that. And Dr. Asif, since you do work in Shalima Hospital and you are exposed to a lot of children and adults as well yes. on daily basis. So um, has this ever happened to you that maybe someone came to you with pneumonia developed at a very later stage and they did not find out why or what this was and then you told them and how hard a job it is to actually tell them you know what you actually crossed the stage where it was normal and it's getting fatal now? You know, <coughs> mostly it's of the plastic surgeons where we uh, do get obviously most of our patients are the, uh, the uh, burn patients or yeah. the pediatric patients. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they are uh, these part of society we're dealing with uh, patients mostly coming from very downtrodden society as well. Okay. Uh, because uh, we are the trust hospital as well, and we do cherish uh, do a lot of uh, needy patient, poor patient as well. Wow. And you can say uh, you can easily you can uh, judge from that that a lot of them are immunocompromised. Hmm. They have hmm. low hemoglobins. They have uh, not malnourished uh, as well, especially the children. Right. And they may have uh, uh, some. Uh, most of the time, say they come for a cleft surgery, hmm. and then we just uh, before we put them on list or for any surgery, yeah. 
yeah. we send we check uh, them that they have got a, a subtle pneumonia in there mm. and they are just hanging on and though nobody knows them actually right. uh, just remember about a month ago we had a patient which had an elective burn surgery for his hand okay. but had a very poor chest and the mother have no idea right. and he was actually living with that uh, pneumonia for maybe a month or so okay. and uh, they were just not careful the parents mm. are because uh, you you're right as uh, dr sajid also mentioned that uh, the education is very important especially yeah, to parents hmm, right. to because the uh, prevention can only happen if parents take it if, you know, the pediatric side if parents take care of small uh, you know cough and cold the baby is getting they don't uh, you know the poverty is also a problem which is obviously yes. a bigger problem which is very difficult so it cannot uh, be solved right in a right, single day right. that uh, at least awareness they should not neglect it hmm. that there is a sore throat coughing going on hmm. uh, chesty and especially the children because i'm l deal with lot of the children but also dr asif you know for families who are not very well educated i mean i'm pretty sure all of us came across the video mm -hmm. of uh, this uh, health worker going for polio drops to administer polio drops to kids and there was there were mothers who weren't willing to do that to their kids yeah, yeah. so why this reluctancy i mean i don't i don't understand that and especially when you're not probably you belong to such segments of the society when you're not educated enough mm -hmm. and your uh, child gets a cough or has a bad lung lungs problem or you know bad throat as well <laughs> it's very normal for them they don't even go to the doctor to get them checked yeah. so that segment how are you going to aware them yeah that's what we will we'll, we'll start the prevention programs no mm. that's especially with the, actually uh, madam hashmat will be very uh, also is going to be organizing a pr prevention program as okay. well because the, what we need to do is mm. to cater the uh, the uh, patients where they are coming more frequently especially all the government hospital right. there's a lot of uh, you know crowd of patients you know right. you just cannot just squeeze in through mm. we over trust hospital but there are government hospital which is overwhelmed with the patients right. what we need to see uh, address those uh, especially i i talk as my is on children side yeah. that uh, like pediatric out outpatient children hospital there is big children hospital in every mm. city and then also there are big uh, government hospital with a lot of pediatric patient come if we tell their parents at the doorstep that they are the prevention th things they should do because yeah. now uh, you know media is in qu quite involved they yes. know the yes. power of that so right. even if it is they are not illiterate people still they know if there is pamphlet there they do uh, involve with the preventive workers we have to need we inshallah madam will tell us more about that okay. some prevention program we start okay. so that doesn't happen that the the uh, the pneumonia shouldn't happen hmm. a burn especially i will talk about burn should not happen as well right. so there are some some simple steps the parents should take hmm. at least they aware of like they can keep their room clean or they have to be tidied up you know uh, right. especially even they can make their sure their mm. their uh, own uh, the, the bike their father is driving is mm. also clean there's okay. no more smoke from there so right. there's a lot of pollution coming from the uh, uh, bikes and the motor cars mm. so these be careful to make sure that uh, the pneumonia or airborne infections like which is you know especially same like pneumonia yeah. doesn't happen at first because okay. this is subtle you can see almost every third fourth child you see on the road hmm. they have subtle sore throat going on right, impending pneumonia right. which can happen any time when they have some triggers hmm. like uh, any injury or any burn or okay. any other uh, fever and something then they the, they will turn into a pneumonia or any other super head infection so right. prevention is the best hmm. and should be going to the uh, uh, at the level where it uh, go uh, into the society well where hmm. it means the mothers should be involved first involved, educated yes, what you know the polio vaccination as well yes, because yes. the mothers are the one who are you know, more scared yeah, uh, are more scary uh, about that effect of the polio hmm. because you know, there is a lot of political things as well that they uh, the and also other thing is if especially in some areas where hmm. the uh, mothers are ex not accessible you know in, in our uh, some of the parts of the uh, rural Pakistan, areas, rural areas yes, yes. Uh, the the male is the one who decide that hmm. then here the role of madrasa and the uh, masjid will come as well so okay. the, there are the religious leaders hmm. uh, the one who is uh, uh, doing the uh, uh, prayers family they should as well and the, yeah. you know traditional people of course i yeah. understand they that should ad, uh, teach them educate them about hmm. the, the 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 importance of polio vaccination right. and importance of general hygiene as well right. that uh, and uh, obviously good food as well as also hmm. that's the uh, you know the uh, duty of the right. uh, the government, government but that still they can take care as much as possible at least if they feel hmm. that there is some uh, person have problem yeah. they should go to the doctors 
straight yes, away course, rather than waiting course. it to, b to full blown pneumonia hmm. when the doctors cannot much help at that time. And also Dr. Asif, I think it is very uh, important to establish over here lately everyone is their own doctor because Google is your doctor, I mean it's on yeah, your phone. It's really so it's very funny, we often uh, discuss this as well. If you have a pain in your probably uh, finger or your leg and you start Googling and you will always end up with cancer or something deadly, that yeah, yeah, <laughs> it right. always yeah. happens, right? And then yeah. it makes you so conscious or paranoid, oh my God, what's going to happen Should to me? Just to add on, uh, the cause of the increased incidence of pneumonia is because of the financial limitation hmm. of the, you know, 60 to 70 percent of the rural population of Pakistan. Right. And then there are social myths and taboos about, you know, to see or not to see a doctor. Right, absolutely. Um, so I think, you know, the it has to be a mass communication hmm. and a mass movement Right. in the whole country to educate the, the masses of, of the whole country. Right. I mean, just like the building of time is important and, mm. and it's a noble cause and we have to stand with it. But then at the same time, we have to look after the new generation and to prevent the Remember. preventable conditions mm. which can save millions of lives. Absolutely. And it has to be a mass communication program, mass education program yes. for, uh, say, awareness of the breastfeeding, mm. awareness mm. of the vaccination, right. awareness of a clean water, mm. awareness of uh, the pneumonia and haemophilus vaccination. Right. And I think that, you know, sort of would educate the, the bigger community and prevent the diseases in future and prevent our future generations. Right, and actually, uh, you know, from all this conversation, we have sort of established the fact very clearly that uh, children, you know, toddlers especially, and infants are more prone to pneumonia than adults are. So, Ms. Hashmat, is there a link between their nutrition or probably in, you know, the infant mortality rate, is it related to the mother's health as well? Of course, yeah. that's the basic thing. Mm. Mother has to be healthy. Yeah. All the cleft deformities are because mother has a severe deficiency mm. of folic acid and other deficiencies. Okay. Um, about the prevention of uh, pneumonia, I really would like to add this, that mother, mm. I have met mothers from all segments of our society in okay. Pakistan. Every mother wants their child to be healthy. Yeah, of course. And on any side of the mat you sit, from developing country to underdeveloped country or developed country, you see mothers have same feelings. The basic thing is this, that we need to educate the mother. Mm. When I had my third child, who is now 26 years Washington. old, my nurse told me to examine my breast okay. for breast cancer. Mm. 26 years later, yeah while examining and she told me to examine every month okay. i self diagnosed myself with cancer oh you did yes wow so and and everybody was shocked even dr asif was mm. shocked and i was in pakistan right. how did you diagnose yeah absolutely not so, a lot of people know how to yes so because they taught me mm. and i was doing it so this is the tradition in usa that every time the child is born before the child is discharged the nurse tells everything, mm. uh, you know, inform, educates the, educate mother. the right. mothers. Right. They even educated me how to examine the breast. Mm. So this is what we need to do. And Ms. Hashmat, you're a cancer survivor, Mashallah, you're a legend and you're a hero, I must say. <laughs> and we're you. so proud and so glad to have you over here. But on this note, ladies and gentlemen, we need to head out to a very short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the social awareness programs that are going on and also quick causes and treatments or a cure for a pneumonia. Stay tuned to PTV World. Good morning.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching World This Morning with Shaza Hashmi today. And today is the 12th of November, and we are observing World Pneumonia Day all across the globe. And that is what we're talking about with the brilliant and amazing guests that we have in our studio. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world where cancer is treatable now, where tuberculosis is preventable now, HIV is preventable now at some stages, of course. So pneumonia being such a common disease and being prevalent in societies for so long should be preventable, curable la comes later on, but at least preventable. And so let's start with what the symptoms are so every one of you at least knows when or at what time you should go to see a doctor uh, before it develops into something fatal. So Dr. Sajad, clear symptoms of pneumonia. Um, I think she's at, uh, the, the, the initial symptoms are sort of quite non-specific and hmm. they start with uh, symptoms of fever, okay. um, malaise, lethargy, tiredness. In kids, the most important thing is that they get more irritable Right. And they can get drowsy as well. And they start, uh, they stop to feed and their breathing patterns get quite erratic. Okay. So it's quite non-specific symptoms with fever and generally being tired and malaise and a bit withdrawn from their normal activities. Mm. More uh, specific symptoms are productive cough uh, with a sputum, which can be discolored. Okay. It may have some blood in the sputum as well. Oh, okay. People can get breathless. Uh, they develop shortness of breath. Uh, they can get uh, chest pain. And uh, in severe cases, they can get what we call it a respiratory failure, okay. which may require intubation and ventilation, uh, mm. which is due to the lack of oxygen, mm. and which again makes uh, make you know patients who are that unwell to be more drowsy and irritable. Mm. Okay. Oh, so these are some of the common symptoms. But Dr. Saab, uh, the, some of these initial symptoms that you did mention, even if one of my siblings develops such symptoms, I wouldn't take them seriously because if they do develop cough or something, I'd give them some basic medicine. I mean, the mind does not go there. Maybe it's pneumonia. You should go see a doctor. So when does it get worse? Uh, I think you have to keep a track and record of the fever. Okay. If the fever is, say, more than 100 degrees, right. if the child is not eating, and drinking, mm. if he's having persistent vomiting and he's complaining of abdominal pain, right. he's getting more lethargic, mm. he's getting more irritable, he's getting more retracted from the, the normal activities, mm. I think that's the time to get worried and ask and seek for help as soon as possible. Right. And again, uh, you know, the viral uh, pneumonias, mm. uh, they are more uh, sort of, they don't have any cure as such. Okay. All you have to do is keep them, you know, the, the patients and the kids well hydrated, mm. well nourished and to give regular paracetamol and brufen to get over the fever. Okay. So it's more sort of non-specific treatment, but if the patients are uh, not eating and drinking, and they are having increased sputum mm. and high grade temperatures, which is not settling over 24 to 48 hours, right. then rather, you know, it's better to uh, ask for help mm, rather definitely. sitting at home. Definitely. And so, you know, um, since we did mention uh, Dr. Asif and Ms. Hashmat that uh, burn patients, especially children, are more prone to diseases, especially pneumonia as well. So this is the root cause let's say you know burning any part of your body and then you become exposed to diseases how can we avoid that and one what are some of the most common ways that people come up with this is how we burnt ourselves especially children yes uh, according to dr tarek who is the burn surgeon in yeah. pims uh, every five minutes one person gets burn in pakistan oh okay and burn is one of the leading cause mm. of uh, children's death also mm. and uh, so the most common 75 percent of the burns are mm. hot water burns okay children they come to our clinic in shalamar hospital mm. with the uh, with burns with simple chai mm. tea mm. dal mm. they are not aware right. that these burns number one they are not aware that the child can burn like hot water can burn like fire they are not aware of that and number two they are not aware of the consequence. Mm. If the child will put his hand or her hand in hot water, right. then what will happen? And Dr. Sir, these are your pictures from your social work. Can you also tell them what's yeah. going on? Yes, actually, the, these are the children who we took to United States to Shalamar Hospital oh, those for free who surgeries. Right. And they, are, they were not, we were not able to treat them mm. uh, in Pakistan, in Shalamar Hospital. They were severely electric burn oh and electric wire. This child was, uh, this child, mm. she lost her limbs and her face oh because of electric burn. She's from a city called Patoki oh. in Punjab. And okay. uh, she was just on her roof, touched the, her dupatta, touched the wire, and she suddenly got burned. When we took, she was, she got treated in Texas Children Hospital. Okay. And she told me, she said, Mama, if I knew 
this would have happened. I wouldn't have touched it. Definitely. So this education mm. needs to go out. Right. And, and luckily, our new uh, health uh, minister is very keen right. in starting the safety and prevention program. Right. So we are launching this program oh. for, for burn uh, prevention and fire safety. Well, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. Save your children from burning, you know, fire can kill. Mm. If they don't kill, if the child is lucky to survive, yeah. is deformed for lifelong. Definitely, and you know then there are so many complexes and insecurities that later on develop. Exactly. In but Dr. Um, Ms. Ashmat, you just mentioned that, uh, you know, the children who are burned in, uh, Dr. Asif, you as well, you take them to uh, abroad wherever they need to be treated. So you guys take care of the expenses? Yes. So is there any cri criterion of who falls under, the, who is eligible for that? So what we do is that all children are from all over Pakistan, they come to our clinic okay. at Shalamar Hospital, Lahore, and then we treat them there. The only criteria is this, that we are not able to treat them here due to complicate, uh, complex cases mm. or due to maybe they need numeral surgeries or maybe they no need extensive treatment. Okay. And rehab is not available here. Right. right. That's the only criteria. Mm, rehab is not available. You're right in Dr. Asif, you know. Um, it's a brilliant initiative that you guys are doing. You're taking care of the people who cannot afford to their health, the health services that they actually deserve, right? So um, anyone who belongs to the, you know, who are poor actually and belongs to that segment of the society mm -hmm. can reach you guys if they need. I mean, in terms of burns as well or in, in any case that you guys can take care of. Yes, and uh, Madam Hashmat actually doing this for almost... Uh, uh, since uh, 20, almost 20 years. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, her uh, service is not only for burn victims. Obviously, mm -hmm. you see there are a uh, lot of patients uh, which in picture you've seen, but yes. uh, more than about uh, 80 plus, uh, about 100 patients have been treated through this program. Wow. The, all patients are obviously very poor mm. uh, and they cannot afford it. And the, through Madam's uh, her own effort, mm. they got treated there. So it's and not they, only for they, Punjab, they, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, they are actually from every part of the Pakistan. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I think I know there are patients from uh, uh, Jakbabad, from Karachi, even wow. from the one from Islamabad the girl which is uh, actually uh, has, she has a congenital name so it's not only for burn victim okay the girl you have, may have seen in picture she has a congenital uh, absent of all four limbs oh, okay. so which is not treatable even in any very right, right. she need a prosthesis which can only be managed in uh, USA obviously of they course. have the one and she is now actually uh, doing her masters there so oh, wow. and she was born with a congenital deformity so it's on not only for the burn victim but all congenital deformities okay deformities may be from facial deformities mm. yeah or uh, limb deformities of the patient cannot, the baby cannot walk because of some congenital problem yeah. or as as mentioned a lot of them happen because of the burns as well which mm. is a quite uh, problem as well okay. and we do get of course a lot of referrals uh, especially from all over the Pakistan and uh, try to uh, manage as much as we can so but that's obviously madam will tell us more that we need a lot of support from our philanthropist Absolutely. and uh, uh, rich uh, segment of the society to contribute because the, the treatment is very expensive. It is and indeed, it these, is of course. Uh, even uh, in USA, these has, uh, these some patients need a sort of multiple surgeries, mm. which is done in big, very big teaching hospitals right. and uh, it's very expensive treatment. And there is a lot of logistics involved as well. The patients stay there, yes. uh, obviously other than treatment, mm. there are a group of patients which Madam takes with her in uh, Texas. Uh, there are uh, uh, availability of a uh, house for them, for feeding, teaching and feeding, uh, eating as well. Mm. You can see a lot of these patients have no limbs, so mm. they need a continuous nursing care and which is also very expensive to provide. So they have, and Madam's patients are actually we're seeing them, uh, they've grown bigger. Mm. So they have uh, kids and now almost um, mm -hmm. they turn into the uh, passing the teenage. Uh, but that's when you must feel so proud, you know, when they grow up, and especially you've it's helped them actually. It is indeed a blessing. Dr. Hashmat, my producer, insists on you telling everyone where to contact you directly if they need to, you know, uh, any They help. can contact us at Shalamar Hospital in right. Lahore, or they can uh, text us on our number. Uh, can you please tell them to the uh, viewers? My this number is, is uh, uh, plus one eight three two five four five seven 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 three. Okay. Do you have a Pakistani yes, as well? Yes, I have yes. two. It's 0300 hmm. 451 hmm. 
0300-451-4961. Right. And it's on the screens as well, ladies and gentlemen. It's 0300 451 Four nine six one. This is where if you cannot afford any of these, you know, facilities for you, and if you have any disabilities or, uh, you know, dysfunctions, or a burn, if you're a burn victim as well, you can definitely contact these numbers. Now, coming back to you, Dr. Sajad, I need you to tell me, being a pulmonologist, what are some of the most commonly occurring pulmonology-related diseases in Pakistan? Is that, of course, you get to deal with them on a daily basis, right? That's true. Uh, I think the most common stands out is infection, hmm. and infection pneumonia is the, the biggest, you know, presenting to us throughout the across spectrum of age group we are coming across. Right. Uh, in pneumonias, the chronic pneumonias is TB, tuberculosis. Right. Uh, besides the acute pneumonias, that the streptococcus pneumonia, so TB is the other group of infection or pneumonia which we commonly see uh, hmm. throughout the year. So TB actually starts with basic pneumonia as well? Uh, TB is a pneumonia. Pneumonia is any inflammation, hmm. any infection of the, of the lungs. Of the lungs. Okay. Okay. And uh, the acute pneumonias happen over hours to days. Okay. TB is a chronic slow growing infection hmm. which happens over weeks to months. Right. Right. So it's the, the presentation which is different but they all look like a pneumonia on a chest x-ray or on examination findings. Hmm. Okay. And the treatment is obviously different for both the pneumonias. Right. Other common conditions are which you commonly see is asthma, uh, COPD or chronic obstructive airways disease. Okay. Uh, flu is again quite common. We commonly see uh, patients with flu complications. And uh, the lung cancer is also um, is, is there um, in the society and uh, uh, very rarely we see people with what we call it lung fibrosis or okay. interstitial lung disease. Right. Uh, so it's, it's a huge spectrum which we are seeing across but the most common is pneumonias, asthma and COPD. And you know, thank you so much for actually being here on this day, all of you, because it's World Pneumonia Day and all of these discussed, we actually discussed the causes, symptoms, treatment and cure of pneumonia in a such great detail. But towards the end, I want all of you to leave us with a message, the viewers, about awareness and educating them about how important it is to know what happens with you in terms of pneumonia or any other disease. Here's your camera, please go ahead. Uh, I think my simple message is that prevention is better than cure yeah. and uh, we all have to take part in it. And it has to go to the grassroots level of the school, of the masjid and madrasa, and in the general community and public. And the important message is eat healthy, uh, do regular exercise, uh, and do regular vaccination. Uh, dispel all the myths which you have. If you have any queries, any questions, go and ask an expert. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Ms. Ashmat. Uh, my message about burns is that the burns are preventable. So please be very careful and uh, make sure that your child is not exposed to situations where the child can burn. And in case Khudana Khasta child is burned, please right away take the child to, to burn facility where the child is being cured. Hmm. And also, you know what, what usually happens <laughs> if there's a burn or something, so there are a lot of people who come in and they're like, Anda laga lo, toothpaste laga lo. So is there like first aid as well that you should do at home before you go to I will, see a doctor? Uh, yes, there is and I will leave that for Dr. Asif okay, to explain sure. because that is a very important question because how you treat the child in acute stage, right. it can prevent the uh, amputation of the limbs. Right, right. So Dr. <laughs> Asif, please explain this, what we just started. Yeah, so I, and I will second all with uh, Dr. Sajad and uh, Madam have said to about the prevention, obviously better than cure. Yeah. But I will emphasize, especially about the burn patient, there is a taboo in our society that when there is a burn, yeah. uh, straight away, don't put water on that. Okay. So this is a big myth I want to tell all the parents mm. and the mothers especially. If there is burn, chemical, whatever, yeah. first of all, cool it off. The cooling is first, you don't need to go to anything, you just put water on that. Even because in case of electric burns? Yeah, uh, electric burn, obviously, they need to, uh, uh, that needs, obviously, uh, you have to remove the source there. Right, 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 but definitely. to cool it off, every burns, you need to put water on that. Okay. So most of the burns, scald burn, the what's happened, if most of the mothers don't touch, don't allow the uh, water to be touched there. Mm. So 
because we can prevent the depth of the burn by just cooling it off. So, is a chemical burn, electrical burn even, right. you need to cool it off. So, put a water on that straight away. The first thing you do after removing the hmm. obviously from the source yeah. is put the water there, make it cool, cool it off. You know, so, cold this water. is sort of a myth yeah. buster, you know, because yeah. a lot of people actually say it's Don't harmful it. to use water. water so, yeah. this is your first aid in case you do develop a burn mm -hmm. at your place before seeing a doctor and, you know, just to make yourself uh, safe, you should wash it with water as the doctors have just told it. Thank you so much for every one of you for being here. It was such a great pleasure to have you. So, ladies and gentlemen, on this day, I just need to reiterate the fact that pneumonia is so common. It's just around us. It's not only viruses, it's bacteria as, as well, it's fungi as well. So, just be careful and especially, you know, in this season when we know we're more prone to diseases lately, in winter especially, when you go out, uh, try to wear a face mask. It does look odd. I know and a lot of people actually have reservations wearing them, but it's for your own safety and for the people around you as well. So if you need to add to anything on our discussion, write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of World This Morning. On Twitter, it is World This Morning without a G. On Dailymotion and YouTube, it is World This Morning, World This Morning. And the repeat is going to be at 5 past 11 in the night. Till the next time, take care. Good morning. Well. And don't forget to write to us on our Facebook fan fan page, which is with the name of Well This Morning on Twitter. Well This Morning without on Daily Motion YouTube. Well This Morning, Well This Morning. And the fabulous repeats going to be on five past eleven at night. So till the next time, one, two, three. Good, good morning. morning.